Hey there, welcome to my channel. Today I'll provide you with all that you need to know about benzodiazepines, including the mechanism of action, pharmacokinetics, indications, side effects, drug interactions, etc. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you like my teaching or presentation style, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. Thank you. Benzodiazepines are well known on the streets because of the abuse potential, and because of this, they have specific street names. So benzos, tranks, blues or blueies, roshis, roofies, duck eggs, <laughs> mother's little helpers. Okay, very interesting. <laughs> now, all drugs have specific effects because of their chemical structures. And most drugs get their names based on the chemical structure itself. So same for the benzodiazepines. Let's break down the name into two. Benzodiazepines. First, the benzo refers to the benzene ring, and then you have the diazepine ring. When these two are added, you get the backbone of all benzodiazepine drugs. And when different molecules are added to this backbone, that is how we get the different types of benzodiazepines in the drug class. Here is a list of the common ones. There are a lot of benzodiazepines, and there is no point of listing every single one. So these are just the common ones that you may see. Although they may have slightly different indications, the mechanism of action is relatively the same. In general, the benzos are known as downers or depressants. Depressants reduce arousal and stimulation. They slow down the messages between the brain and the body. So in contrast to stimulants that increase the stimulation between the brain and the body, leading to increased blood pressure, heart rate, energy, causing restlessness and jitters, depressors will decrease the blood pressure, the heart rate, energy, causing you to be more relaxed and calm. Depressants like benzos achieve the effect by working on GABA receptors. GABA stands for gamma amino butyric acid. Let's learn more about GABA. First, it's a neurotransmitter, which is pretty much a molecule that carries information and transmits it from one place to the next. You can also refer to them as chemical messengers. Usually the message comes from a nerve cell or a neuron and then these neurotransmitters will go to the target cell and release the information. It looks something like this. The neurotransmitters here are the blue circles. They bind to the target cell and in this case the target cell is a neuron. When GABA binds to its target cell, the message it releases is an inhibitory message. This message will slow down how fast the cells trigger an action potential, which normally allows the nearby cells to send signals. So because of this, it leads to the depressant effects. You may also hear people say that GABA reduces the excitability of neurons. So the same thing. GABA binds to two types of receptors, GABA-A and GABA-B. GABA-A is more clinically significant and relevant, and that is the receptor that the benzos bind to. Here we have a simplified model of the GABA-A receptor. In reality, it actually has five binding sites, but in this model, I show two here since that's all we need to understand the mechanism of the benzos. It's a ligand gated ion channel. These are a type of receptors that open upon activation to allow for specific ions to enter or leave. Now the GABA-A receptor is a unique one because it also contains an allosteric binding site on it. An allosteric site on a receptor is simply a different part of the receptor that other molecules can bind to and impact the effect of the ligand that binds in the active site. The molecules that bind to the allosteric sites are called allosteric modulators. Depending on their characteristics, they can either potentiate the effect of the ligand that binds to the active site, so these are called positive allosteric modulators, or they can reduce the effect. So these are called negative allosteric modulators. In this case, the allosteric modulator is the benzodiazepine and the active site's ligand is GABA. Now question to you, do you think that benzos are positive or negative allosteric modulators? Positive, correct, or PAMs. They potentiate the effects of the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA. 
Now, is that why some benzos name end with Pam, P-A-M, Lorazepam, Diazepam, Tamazepam? Hmm, who knows? Anyways, both GABA and the benzos must be bound to the receptors for the effect to occur. Once this happens, there will be an increase in the influx of chloride ions into the cell, resulting in the decreased firing of action potentials of the neuron, reduced signal conduction of the neuron, and this will ultimately lead to the depressants effects. And this is also the reason why we use them for the following indications. First, seizure disorders, including status epilepticus. In order to understand why benzos work for the indications that I list, I will briefly discuss the pathophysiology of the disease states. Now, in patients with seizure disorders, there is an imbalance between the excitatory neurons or the neurons that fire more often and the inhibitory neurons. This imbalance leads to abnormal electrical activity, which can cause seizures. So this is straightforward, right? We give drugs like benzos that will potentiate the effect of the inhibitory neurons to fix the imbalance. Benzos have a fast onset, good efficacy, and can be administered in different routes. And they are the first line agents for status epilepticus, which is a neurological emergency. Here are some common benzos that we use for this indication. Next, in generalized anxiety disorders, there has been various theories implicated for its pathophysiology, but it all points towards the fact that there is an increased excitation activity of the sympathetic nervous system and a decrease in the GABA activity. GABA plays a role in feeling calm and muscle relaxation. That is why benzos are highly effective for anxiety. When administered, they reduce anxiety symptoms such as muscle tension, headaches, panic attacks, sweating, insomnia, and restlessness. Here are examples of common benzos that are used for generalized anxiety disorders. Plus, we also use these agents for social phobia and panic disorders since they are associated with anxiety. Next is insomnia, which is often considered to be a disorder of hyperarousal or increased neuron firing and activation. So as we will see later on when we discuss the side effects of benzos, they are known to cause drowsiness and sedation. In studies, they have been shown to increase the sleep time and improve the sleep quality by reducing the time it takes to fall asleep. Some of the benzos that you may see being used for insomnia are flurazepam, temazepam, and triazolam. Temazepam and triazolam are preferred because they have a fast onset and a short half-life. Perfect because we don't want the patient to be drowsy all day. Benzos can also reduce muscle spasms because in these patients, they have an imbalance in the inhibitory and the excitatory signals sent to the muscles. Some of the agents that we use for this indication are diazepam, lorazepam, and temazepam. Benzos are also indicated for alcohol withdrawal. In in fact, they actually have the best evidence in the treatment of alcohol withdrawal and are considered the gold standard. Alcohol withdrawal syndrome occurs in alcohol-dependent people after cessation or reduction in heavy or prolonged alcohol use. The most common manifestations are mainly excitatory for stimulant-like effects, so tremors, restlessness, insomnia, tachycardia, seizures, increased agitation. Some of the common agents that we use for alcohol withdrawal syndrome include chlorodiazepoxide, diazepam, lorazepam, and oxazepam. And lastly, these agents are used to induce sedation, which is a state of calmness or sleep for certain procedures. Common agents that we use in this setting is midazolam. As you can see, benzos have various uses, but they also have some clinically significant adverse effects that may limit its use. These adverse effects can be divided into short-term side effects and long-term side effects. Short-term use of benzos is when it's used for about two weeks or shorter duration. These side effects are dizziness, drowsiness. Benzos make you feel calm and sleepy. 
even more significant for our elderly patients, right? Because they can experience unsteadiness and become prone to falls, which may lead to serious injuries, blurry vision, impaired coordination. And that is why it's not recommended to operate a vehicle when you're taking benzos. Also drinking alcohol in combination with benzodiazepines may actually heighten these effects. These agents can also cause dry mouth, confusion. A patient once said this to me verbatim, Benzos calmed my anxiety, but my memory became a deep fog. And it's all because of the mechanism, right? It's slowing things down in the brain. Next, benzos can slow down your breathing and lastly, weaken your muscles. Long-term use of benzos usually refers to when it's used for more than four weeks. Some of the things that come with that is tolerance. So this is when the person has a diminished response to the drug, which occurs when the drug is used repeatedly and the body adapts to the continued presence of the drug. So now larger and larger doses must be taken to produce the same effect. This can lead to dependence and addiction where the individual feels like they cannot function normally without the drug. Even when it's leading to negative consequences, they still can't stop. Long-term use of benzos have been linked to cognitive impairment. These agents can affect your visual spatial ability and speed of processing information. The visual spatial ability refers to our ability to process and interpret visual information about where objects are. For example, this plays a role in why you walk through doorways rather than bumping into door frames. Memory loss, also seen in patients who use benzos long term. Specifically, anti rograde amnesia. This is a type of memory loss that occurs when you can't form new memories. In the most extreme cases, you lose the ability to learn or retain any new information. Although the adverse effects listed here are generally the drug class adverse effects, the incidence or the intensity may vary with each individual drug because each drug has its own pharmacologic properties. These properties also impact the drug's therapeutic effects. So each drug has its own pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic parameters. I will only focus on pharmacokinetics as this is more clinically significant and I have a really good video on this topic, so make sure to check that out. Pharmacokinetics is defined as what the body does to the drug. So after the drug enters the body, the body will absorb it, distribute it into the tissues, metabolize it, and then eliminate it. First is absorption, or the movements of the drug into the blood. Benzos can be administered as IV, IM, rectal, or oral. We expect absorption of IV formulations to be 100%, but there's also good absorption with the other routes of administration. Diazepam, lorazepam, and midazolam come in IV and intramuscular formulations. Diazepam is the only one that comes as a suppository also. Everything else plus the ones listed here come in oral formulation. Now the drug is absorbed into the blood. It's time for it to move from the blood into the tissues. This is known as distribution. Few things can impact the ability of the drug to do this. Drugs that are highly protein bound in the blood will have a difficult time crossing the membrane to enter the tissues. Benzos as a class of drugs are highly protein bound. Highly protein bound drugs are also more prone to drug-drug interactions. These drugs concentrate in the CNS and fat tissues. The more lipophilic, the faster the rate of onset. So some examples with fast onsets are diazepam and triazolam, and this is why we love diazepam in status epilepticus. Next, metabolism. All benzos are metabolized by the liver. The goal of metabolism is to make the drug more water-soluble so that it can be excreted. The liver does this in two Two phases. Phase one is catalyzed by the cytochrome P450 enzymes, and then phase two is when a specific group is attached to the drug to make it even more water soluble. In this case, it's glucuronic acid. I have a video on the cytochrome P450 enzymes. It's one of my best performing videos. Link above if you want a good review on that. Now, because they go through the liver for metabolism, if a patient has liver disease, these drugs can potentially accumulates, which is concerning for elderly patients. This does not apply to three specific benzodiazepines, lorazepam, oxazepam, and temazepam. 
because these agents only go through phase two and not phase one. Phase two metabolism is not impacted by liver or renal disease. So you could still use these agents in those patients. For all others that go through the phase one, you must be cautious in patients with hepatic or renal disease. The three listed here are the preferred agents in elderly patients. Benzos are primarily eliminated by the kidneys. So it makes sense why we would want to be cautious in patients with renal disease. This is even more important for the benzos that have a long half-life. So some of these benzos are diazepam and clonazepam. And they should be avoided in elderly patients or patients with renal disease. Examples of benzos with a short half-life include alpralazam, lorazepam, oxazepam, and temazepam. As you can see, the pharmacokinetics of these drugs are crucial for you to know, as it definitely will influence how you manage patients on benzodiazepines. There are other important information about benzos that you need to know in order to manage patients appropriately. We will refer to these as clinical pearls. Because benzos have an abuse potential, we must know the antidote, just in case of an overdose. The antidote is flumazenol, which is a competitive inhibitor of the GABA receptor, meaning it binds to the receptor at the benzo site and prevent benzos from binding. This can lead to reversal of sedation and comas due to benzodiazepine overdose. When verifying orders for benzodiazepines, always check for drug interactions, and then you want to counsel the patient to avoid grapefruits and to inform a healthcare professional before purchasing any over-the-counter vitamins or herbal products. As as these may also interact with the benzos. Lastly, any other substance that may intensify its sedative effects should be avoided, so alcohol, opioids, and barbiturates. Benzos do cross the placenta and are considered category D, so studies in pregnant women have demonstrated a risk to the fetus, but potential benefits of the drug may outweigh the risk, like in seizures, where fetal mortality increases by 10% for every minute of maternal seizure activity. This does not apply to fluorazepam and temazepam as they are considered category X drugs because they have been shown to affect skeletal development. Lastly, all the benzos should be avoided in the first trimester. Next, whether it's being used medically or recreationally, there is a risk of withdrawal symptoms once you reduce the dose or discontinue the drug in a patient who has been on it long term. Withdrawal symptoms include sleep disturbances, irritability, increased tension, anxiety, panic attacks, hand tremors, palpitations, and seizures. Most of these withdrawal symptoms are opposite of the downer effects that benzos normally cause. The risk of severe withdrawal symptoms are reduced by using longer acting agents because it takes longer for it to leave the body. Tapering the dose down gradually over a period of time is also recommended to reduce these symptoms. As most of you know, benzos are scheduled substances, meaning its possession and use is regulated by the government. It's scheduled for drug, meaning there is a low potential for abuse and low risk of dependence. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and that will be the end of this video. I hope I covered all the important things you need to know about benzos. If you learned a thing or two, then make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and leave questions down below. And also follow me on these social media platforms. Thank you and take care.